New York, 1841. The population was about 327,000. There was one tobacco shop that everyone seemed to flock to, but this was not because of the product. In truth, this was due to the beautiful woman who worked there. Her name was Mary Rogers. It is said that Rogers was born in 1820 in Lyme, Connecticut, though her birth records have not survived for obvious reasons. She grew up as an only child with her widowed mother after her father, James Rogers, died in a steamboat explosion when she was 17 years old. Soon after, she took a job as a clerk in a tobacco shop. John Anderson, the shop owner, paid Rogers a generous wage due to her physical attractiveness. The surge in customers can be credited to Rogers' appearance as well, with one customer later stating that he spent an entire afternoon at the store only to exchange, quote, teasing glances with her. On Friday, October 5, 1838, the newspaper The Sun reported that Miss Mary Cecilia Rogers had disappeared from her home. Her mother, Phoebe, said she found a suicide note, which the local coroner analyzed and said revealed a, quote, fixed and unalterable determination to destroy herself, end quote. The next day, however, the Times and Commercial Intelligence reported that the disappearance was a hoax and that Rogers only went to visit a friend in Brooklyn. The Sun had previously published a story known as the Great Moon Hoax in 1835, causing controversy. Some suggested this return was actually the hoax, evidenced by Rogers' failure to return to work immediately. When she finally resumed working at the tobacco shop, one newspaper suggested the whole event was a publicity stunt managed by Anderson. On Wednesday, July 28, 1841, Rogers' body was found in the East River. Just three days earlier, she had told her fiancé, Daniel Payne, that she would be visiting her aunt across town and would return the next day. Unfortunately, she never returned from that trip. Rogers was last seen at a tavern in New Jersey with a man whom the owner, Frederico Loss, described as a tall, mysterious man. It did not take long for the city's largest newspapers to jump on the case. That August, Federico Loss came forward again, claiming that her sons had found several items of women's clothing in a swamp near her property. Her clothes had clearly been there for quite some time, and had shown the wear and tear evident of a struggle. This included a handkerchief with the initials MR embroidered on it. The general consensus was that either her fiancé Payne had killed her, or that she was a victim of a random act of violence. In October of 1841, Payne committed suicide, leaving behind a note that read, quote, To the world, here I am on the very spot. May God forgive me for my misspent life, end quote. Some debated whether Payne's suicide was compelled by the guilt of murdering Rogers or by genuine heartbreak. One year later, the tavern owner, Frederica Loss, was accidentally shot by one of her sons. On her deathbed, she gave a confession about the Rogers case, claiming that the mystery man was in fact a doctor who had come to her house to give Rogers an abortion. When the procedure went wrong, Rogers died and the doctor, with the help of Loss's sons, helped him dispose of the body in the river. However, the autopsy on Rogers' body showed that she wasn't pregnant. While some accept Loss's confession as true, this case still remains unsolved.